Hi, I'm Simon with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we're going to show you how to repair your appliance. Are you ready? Remember, anytime you work on your appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there is no chance of electrocution. Also, make sure you turn off the water supply to the washer. In this video, we'll show you how to replace the front half of the outer tub of the Whirlpool front load washer. It's going to be an easy repair, should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. For this job, we're going to need a Torx 10, 20 and 25 screwdrivers, a large pair of pliers, a 7mm, 13mm and 24mm socket wrenches, a small flat blade screwdriver, a larger flat blade screwdriver and a hammer. When you open up the package, you're going to get a new front half of the outer tub and a new gasket. The main reason why the front half of the outer tub would need to be replaced is because it breaks or gets damaged. To get this job done, we need to start with removing the top panel. Using the Torx 20 screwdriver, take out the three screws that hold the top panel. Then slide it back an inch and lift off the washer. Next, with the same Torx 20 screwdriver, we will take out all the screws which hold the rear access panel and then remove the panel. Next, we need to remove both braces, the lower and upper. For that, we're going to use a Torx 20 screwdriver. Pull it up and remove it. Now we need to remove the control panel assembly. Pull the drawer out, then press the tab and remove the drawer. Use a Torx 20 screwdriver to remove the screw on the left. Next, you need to release the locking tab on the right inside the control panel assembly. Now we need to open the door and then insert the flat blade screwdriver into the slot in the middle under the control panel to release the bottom locking tab that holds the panel. Push up the control panel to release it. Remove the interface controls harness plug from the main control board. There should be a locking tab you will need to release to unplug the harness. Ours is broken so we're just going to pull it out. Remove the interface control wire harness from all the retainer clips. Pull the harness through the opening in the front frame and remove the control assembly. Now we need to do a few things in order to remove the front panel. Using the flat blade screwdriver, Pry out the retaining ring and then remove it from the boot seal. Then pull the boot seal off the front panel lip. Next, we should remove the door switch. Use the Torx 20 screwdriver and remove the three screws, then push the switch in. Next, we must remove the toe panel using the Torx 20 screwdriver. Push up and slide the toe panel out. Remove the two Torx 20 screws at the bottom of the front panel. Take out the two Torx 20 screws at the top. Hold the front panel firmly with both hands and pull it out. Careful not to damage the boot seal, disconnect the window washer tube and the water inlet tube. Using the Torx 20 screwdriver, take out the screws from the top frame brace.
push back the dispenser and leave the top frame brace. Remove the window wash holes from the bracket and remove the top frame brace. Remove the dispenser holes from the top of the tub and put it aside. Now we need to remove the boot seal from the tub. Using the 7 mm socket wrench, loosen up the retainer clamp and take it off. Pull the boot seal off the tub lip. Next step is to remove the two front counterweights. Using the 13 mm socket wrench, first take out the top counterweight. Always keep the counterweight supported. Use both hands to remove it. It's heavy. Then take out the two 13 mm side bolts, support the weight with your hand, loosen up the center bolt and remove the bottom counterweight. As you can see, the flat nut stays with the counterweight. And now we can move to the back of the washer. Remove the belt by pulling on it and slowly rotating the pulley at the same time. Now we need to remove the pulley. Use the hammer's handle to jam the pulley. Use the 24 mm socket wrench to remove the mounting nut. Depending on the model number, you may have the 21 mm mounting nut and in that case, you should use the 21 mm socket. Slide the pulley off the shaft. Using the Torx 25 screwdriver, take out the screw and disconnect the ground wire from the bearing hub. Press the locking tab and remove the ground wire from the motor. Use the 13 mm socket wrench to remove the motor mounting bolt. Slowly pull the motor out and lay it on the bottom. Please note, it's heavy. To remove the rear counterweight, we need to take out the three 13 mm bolts. Don't let go of the counterweight when removing the third bolt. Use both hands to take the weight off the tub. For the next step, we need to place a towel and a container under the tub to catch water that may still be in the tub. And now we are ready to remove the air pressure tube. With the Torx 10 screwdriver, take out the screw that holds the pressure tube connector on the left. Press down on the locking tab underneath and remove the pressure tube. Take a picture of how the green wire is routed, then remove it. Unless you have a wet shop vac, pack a bunch of towels under the filter and then slowly unscrew it to drain the water from the pump. Clean up the mass and move to the rear of the washer. Using the pliers, slide the clamp and remove the top to pump holes from the bottom of the tub. Be careful, it may have some water inside. Again, using the pliers, slide the clamp and remove the outlet holes from the tub on the right. And now we need to detach the shock absorbers from the tub. There are four of them, two at the back and two in the front. Grab the shock absorber at the top, turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise and pull it out. Do the same thing with the front shock absorbers. Take a picture of how it's routed, then remove the green and black wires from the tub.
use the pliers to squeeze the tabs and push out both wire retainer clips. Press on the locking tab and disconnect the wire harness plug from the temperature sensor. And now, using the small screwdriver, remove the wire harness retainer bracket at the top of the cabinet. Grab the suspension spring tight, pull it up and remove it from the cabinet. Remove the second suspension spring and take the tub out of the cabinet. All right, now when we have a tub out, we need to take the springs off. And then we need to remove all those metal clamps which holds two tubs together. To remove them, we will use the flat blade screwdriver. Take a few pictures of how the clamps are installed, then pry them out one by one. Separate the halves. Pull out the basket. Use the flat blade screwdriver to pry out the old top gasket and then remove it completely. At this point, I would suggest you clean the rear half of the tub. You can use any household cleaners. Spray some soap on the temperature sensor and the seal so it will be much easier to remove it. This is the old front half of the washer tub next to the new one. If you don't have this part, you can get it from appliancepartspros.com. Put more soap on the gasket again before installing it onto the new front half of the outer tub. Put some soap on the temperature sensor so it will be easier to push through the gasket. Install the new tub gasket into the rear tub half with a seam on the very top of the tub. Put the front half of the tub on the floor. Place the inner wash basket with the shaft top in and slide the rear half of the tub on. Align the front and the rear top halves together. Snap in the tabs on the opposite sides. Check the picture you took earlier and start placing the clamps. Turn the tub and make sure the ward top on the tub is facing up. Install the suspension springs in the holes closest to the front of the tub. Carefully lift the tub by the springs and hang the springs onto the cabinet. Now we will install the shock absorbers. Expand each shock absorber through the mounting opening and turn clockwise to lock in place. Now move to the back and install the rear shock absorbers the same way. Install the top front counterweight. Secure it with three 13 mm bolts.
Now install the bottom counterweight and secure it with three 13 mm bolts. Move to the back of the washer and install the rear counterweight. Secure it with three 13 mm bolts. Slide on the outlet hose on the right and using the pliers, secure it with the clamp. Get down on the floor and slide on the top the top to pump hose and then install the clamp. Install the motor by pushing its two mounting posts into the mounting holes in the tub. Then push it up and secure it with the 13 mm bolt. Route the green ground wire through the hooks and the holes. Using the Torx 25 screwdriver, attach the ground wire to the bearing hub. Insert the green wires into the clip. Install the air pressure tube by pushing it into the hole in the tub until the tab at the bottom locks and then, using the Torx 10 screwdriver, secure it with a screw. Check the picture you took earlier and route the ground wire and connect the terminal to the motor. Now slide the pulley on the shaft and thread the bolt on. Jam the pulley with the hammer handle and using the 24 mm socket wrench, tighten the bolt. Install the belt first on the motor pulley and then place the belt on a large pulley and rotate it until it snaps on. And now we're going to install the upper and lower braces using the Torx 20 screwdriver. And now we're going to install the rubber boot seal on the top with this arrow in the upper position. Place the seal around the outer top lip into the groove. Make sure it's positioned correctly. And next we're going to install the clamp on. Make sure it's properly positioned. And then, using the 7 mm socket, we're going to tighten it up. To make sure the seal is tight, pull hard on it. Next, slide in the detergent dispenser into the opening in the frame. Insert the dispenser hose into the hole on the top of the tub.
tug on the holes to make sure it's tight. Install the wire harness bracket. Insert the inlet tube into the opening in the boot seal. Lay the top frame brace down and place the window washing holes inside the bracket. Install the top frame brace and using the Torx 20 screwdriver, secure it with the screws. Install the window washing holes. Get down on the floor and route the green and black wires. Clip in two plastic retainers. and connect the temperature sensor plug. Put the door latch into the bracket. Now we can install the front panel. Slide the top tabs under the slots in the corners of the front brace. Push the front panel and secure it with two Torx 20 screws at the top. Then install the two screws at the bottom. Install the toy panel and secure it with the three Torx 20 screws. Reach in and install the door latch through the opening. Secure it with the three Torx 20 screws. Install the boot seal on the front panel lip. Make sure it's installed correctly all around the opening. Position the retainer ring in the groove with a spring at 6 o'clock. Use the Torx 20 screwdriver to stretch the retainer spring and complete the installation. Now let's tug on the seal, make sure it's properly installed. And then we can close the door. Close the door a couple times to check the door latch. Place the flex ribbon connector through the opening in the top brace. Install the control panel so the tabs lock in. Place the control panel connector into the retainer brackets. Plug the control panel harness plug into the main control board. Install the Torx 20 screw on the left of the dispenser. Install the dispenser. 
Install the rear access panel and secure it with the Torx 20 screws. Install the top cover and secure it with the Torx 20 screws. And now, when we are done with the repair, plug the washer back in, turn the water on, and make sure it's working properly. Thank you for being a part of another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. For any of your future appliance repair projects, please check out our other repair videos available on our site, on Facebook, and on YouTube.